Hello again. <clears throat> this is part two of the Luke 17, 20 through 37 expository study video. You need to watch the first video. After this is all uploaded, I'm going to work with the links and whatnot and stuff like that, okay? But in the previous video, we left off on verse 31 in Luke chapter 17, going through verses 20 on to verse 37. We pick up now here in Luke chapter 17, verses 33 on to verse 36. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Remember Lot's wife? She was looking back at the things she was leaving behind. Okay? And what happened to her? She became a pillar of salt. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Lose his life from what the Lord is taking you out of. Lot's wife being taken out by the angels. Hold on, we're going to get to that too. That's going to be very interesting with this. Okay? Being taken out. Lord, don't look back. Don't look back. She looked back and became a pillar of salt. Why? Because she was looking back at what she was leaving behind. Going into uncharted territory, having to trust on the Lord. Okay? I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. One shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Okay? So now, some will look at that and be like, hmm, right there, one shall be taken and the other left. Some will say, see, that's proof that the Christians are going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. No. No. Also, this stems into this idea that there are two catching aways. No. No, 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 no. There's one catching away. The church of the living God. We get caught up. Okay? Hence the time of Jacob's trouble. For Israel's trouble. Okay? But some will look at this and say that there are two catching aways. Right? No. What is this? What is this talking about? Because we know that number one, verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay? Talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The spiritual, two, the kingdom of God, which cometh not with observation. Okay? We get that. This is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. So, right here, it cannot be me, it cannot be referring on to the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble. What is this talking about? Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 on to verse 35. Okay? Check this out. Check this out. During the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 24. On the time of Jacob's trouble. Check this out. Verses 29 on to verse 35. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened after the tribulation of those days. Okay? It's not a title. It's a descriptive. Okay? Shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, for he know that he hath but a short time. Okay? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. All eyes are going to see him. His second coming. Okay? At the catching away not everybody's going to see him, okay? Because that's when he's calling up his body, the church of the living God, okay? 
But at the second coming, all eyes are going to see him. Okay? Check this out. Look at verse 31. Look at verse 31. And he shall send his angels. We will be likened unto the angels. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. His elect. The Jews. His people. Okay? From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his bread and the fig tree, you can liken unto Israel. Okay? The fig tree likened unto Israel. Okay? Let's continue. Now, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot, okay? The uh, abomination that maketh desolate set up, okay? The son of perdition, okay? The mark of the beast, hello, okay? So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation, the one that he was speaking of, and also this generation that is going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass, till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now, all things were put into motion when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, went to the cross, died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for our sins. Yes. Yes. But this generation, that's going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Wasn't talking about that generation there at that very time. Because he's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. This generation, the one that's going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. <clears throat> This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Was all this fulfilled in the first century after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ? Catholics like to tell you that. No, 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 it's a future event. That generation he's talking about, the generation that's going, going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. It's only seven years, brethren, people. Only seven years. In comparison, seven years of God's wrath, where the flood was just 40 days and 40 nights. Sodom and Gomorrah, overthrown just like that. You don't want to be here during the time of Jacob's trouble. You Christians, you know, you charismatics, you Catholics, you Lutherans, you easy believers, uh, easy believism types, you know, you Christians, you don't want to be left behind to see this. You don't. There will be some that survive, yay, yay. But you don't want to go through this time. It's the time for Israel. Not for the purification of the church, dear friends, <laughs> like Catholicism teaches you. I'm pointing over there because that's where all my books on Catholicism are, okay? Giving you a reference. You don't want to go through this time. 
You don't want to go through this time. But when it says, verse 34 in Luke chapter 17, I tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Okay? Matthew chapter 14, or Matthew chapter 24, okay? Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, uh, verse 30 and verse 31. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, when you and I, the church of the living God, we're going to hear, come up hither, okay? The Lord himself calls us, come up hither, okay? We know that. The Lord. Look at, don't look at me. Look at verse 31 now. Look at this. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. His angels. He will send his angels. And they, sh and they, who? The angels. Shall gather together his elect, the Jews. Jew is the apple of God's eye. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, now go back to Genesis chapter 19. The angels are going to gather. Okay, the angels. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, at the catching away. Come up hither. Come up hither. The Lord calls us up. And his second coming, he sends his angels to gather his elect. Verse 34 and verse 36. I tell you in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. It's not a second catching away. It's not. It's not. There are not two catching aways. No. No. No, what? They're going to be caught up and then come, come right back. No, 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 that, 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 that don't make sense. Okay? Look, no. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Go back to Genesis chapter 19. Check this out. Genesis chapter 19. When uh, my wife and I were going over this, um, just discussing it, because this took a couple days to put this together, okay? Um, the Lord just showing us this stuff, and we're both like, oh, wow, <laughs> you know, what the Lord was, was revealing to us through the scriptures, okay? Check this out. Uh, Genesis 19, okay? Uh, all right. Genesis chapter 19, beginning at verse 15, on to verse 16. Uh, on to, let's begin at, uh, where was that? Verse 15, on to verse 17, okay? In Genesis chapter 19, check this out. And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Verse 16. And while he lingered, <clears throat> verse 31, in Luke chapter 17, in that day he which shall be upon the housetop, in that day he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Lingering. 
Verse 16 in Genesis chapter 19. And while he lingered, the men, who were the men? The angels, laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. The angels grabbed Lot and his, took him out of the city. And then fire and brimstone fell upon some on Sodom, which was destroyed just like that. Okay? And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the mount in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Let them that are in Judea flee to the mountains. Hello? But verse 16, And while he lingered, the men who were angels laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters. And then, now go back to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew, not John, Brad. Matthew chapter 24. Verses 29 under verse, uh, no, where was that? Matthew chapter 24. What verse was that? Verse 31. Verse 30 and 31. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they, the angels, shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of, of heaven to the other. Luke 17. Verses 34 and verse 36. I tell you in that night, there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. It is not a second catching away. What did we just look at? In Matthew chapter 24 verse 31. And he shall send his angels. Whereas the catching away of the body of Christ, the church of the living God, before the time of Jacob's trouble, we hear what? We hear what? Go to Revelation chapter 4. Go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking, talking with me, which said, Come up hither. Call to us. He shall descend with heaven, from heaven with a shout. Come up hither. Which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Verse 2, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The angels, one shall be taken, and one shall left, when he, uh, be left, when he will send his angels to gather his elect from the four winds, okay, from four corners or whatever, okay? It's not a second catching away. It is not. At his second coming, he's going to send his angels, and those that are his, he's going to take them away. See, it's not a second catching away, where they go up and then immediately come right back. Like, okay, picture this. Okay, and these are these also those twits who say that the uh, catching away is right uh, as he's coming, at his second coming. So, 
The idea is, according to those who adhere to that nonsense, that they're going to go up and then they're going to go up and come right back down. Where do you get that kind of thing? Someone who is not spiritually discerned. A babe, a novice, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Let's 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 talk. Okay, you, you want the uh, authority on the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble? Look up Brother Brian Denlinger and his videos. Okay, and if there would be anyone whose uh, primary thing it was to defend the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, it's Brother Brian Denlinger. Okay. This is not talking about a second catching away. We, ju we just saw he's going to send his angels. And we saw the example of Lot. How the angels laid hold on his hand. Get out of here! Because he was lingering. And he warns about lingering. Don't go back down to get your stuff. Flee to the mountains of Judea. You see? You see? It's not a second catching away. People. There's only one catching away. And I do so hope that you are one that is going to be resurrected, called, uh, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because, boy, We saw in the previous video what it was like before the flood. We saw after the flood during the days of Lot. And also how they all were all of one speech. Everybody come together. Think about it. Think about it. Okay? Church of the living God gets called up. Okay? Noah. Sends his judgment out upon the earth and the waters. Okay? But church of the living God gets caught up. The church of the living God out of the way. God is never out of the way. He is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. He knows everything. He doesn't go anywhere. We, his body, the church of the living God, gets caught up. Once we're caught up, the witness, church of the living God, which is withholding. Okay? Once we are taken up out of the way, the son of perdition is going to go forth conquering and conquer, destroying everything in his path. Let us build us a tower, a city and a tower. Everybody's going to get together underneath the son of perdition. Let us build us a city and a tower. That reaches on to heaven. And the Tower of Babel was after the flood. But then again, the cry of Sodom was very great unto the Lord. And we see right here in Luke chapter 17, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, where men were compassing a just and righteous man, Lot, even though he did kind of hey, take my daughter's something, okay? Scriptures declare Lot righteous, okay? He was the only one out of how Abraham did um, intercession, <laughs> knowing that Lot was down there. Like, and he got the Lord down to ten righteous. And the Lord said, if I find ten righteous, I will not destroy the city. There was only one uh, righteous individual in Sodom. A, a small remnant. Get it? And the angel had to hasten him because he was lingering. Do you get it? Do you get it? You don't want to be here for the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend. You want nothing of what is coming. Is there something wrong with you? Is, is your pride a little too much in you? Hmm? Oh, are you sorry that you 
got caught? Are you sorry for the act that you did in and of itself? Or, are, or you ought to be, more rather, that the act in and of itself was an offense, is an offense unto the Lord, and guess what? You committed it! You did it! Satan ain't forcing you to do anything, dear friend. Neither is God forcing you to do anything. Your sin, my sin, Put the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, on the cross. Okay? Yes, you had something to do with that. And just because, you, you, oh, I got caught, or oh, I, yeah, but you don't have godly sorrow for what you did unto the Lord to put him on that cross? See, again, brethren, this is the danger of easy believism. They twist it. They jump over it, go straight to the belief. And without brokenness and contrition, God's requirement. Oh. Yeah, you come to the Lord and you pride. Good luck with that. Oh no, dear brother, sister. You, you and I are the church of the living God. We know this. You come to the Lord in your pride, still having some vestige of your pride in you, thinking that you're a good person, that you're worth saving. Good luck. You don't want to be here for this time that's coming. Catholics, the Charismatics, the Pentecostals, the Lutherans, the Methodists, the Easy Believism types, okay, the Mormons, and so on. They're, they're all Christians. Yeah. They're flying Christians, ain't they? I would say about 99% of them are going to be left behind. Those who do not get out of that heresy, and are of the church of the living God. Those of us who are truly saved, born again and converted, are the only ones who are going to get caught up. Your profession outside of contrition and brokenness avails you nothing. You're Christian, right? Good Christian. It's going to avail you nothing. Have you been broken? Have you been broken to the point of godly sorrow? Because you can be sorry for you being broken, but yet not have godly sorrow. Godly sorrow. You put him there. It was your sin. You're not innocent. You are guilty. Hi, 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 I'm talking. Yes, yes. But see, godly sorrow, my past life as a sodomite, as a drug addict, as a drunkard, as a whoremonger, what I did put the Lord Jesus Christ on that cross because of me. Lord, I'm sorry for what I did to you. I'm sorry for what I did to you. If you don't have that, you ain't saved. Look at some of you. Christians, right? Look at you. You revel in it. You revel in the fact that you just believe without any contrition. You don't want to be here for this, man, woman. Verse 37 in Luke chapter 17. Forgive that rant. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, Thither will the eagles be gathered together. 
You know, eagles are an unclean bird, right? Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 on to verse 51. Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 on to verse 51. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Hour. Okay? But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, remember, for the Jews of the, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, this is for. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Hour. Hour. Okay? Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. These are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, if, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. Put that in perspective for those who, uh, that's what about uh, James chapter 5. Woe unto you, rich men. Okay, hold on, we'll get to that. Verily I say unto you, that he shall, verse 47, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord doth delay his, my Lord delayeth his coming coming, excuse me, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. And in an hour that he is not aware of. The day or the hour. It says, you shall not know the day nor the hour. Is it going to be Tuesday? Friday? Sunday? Two o'clock? Three o'clock? And shall cut him up and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Look at this. Verse 48 and 49. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of. Go to James. James chapter 5, I believe that is. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Go to now. Ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, eaten. your gold and silver is cankered. Gold and silver is cankered. So in the time of Jacob's trouble, gold and silver are going to be diminished because everybody is going to have the mark of the beast who are not with those who have given themselves over onto that. 
they're going to hell. During the time of Jacob's trouble, gold and silver is not going to amount to you anything different. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And ye shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and been wanton. Ye have nursed your hearts as in the day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Second coming. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early, early and latter rain. Again, early and latter rain, which these charismatics take way out of context, is reference unto the Jews. The latter rain, the future restorer and fulfillment of the children of Israel, that they are going to be restored once again. Okay? That's what latter rain is referring to. Not that today in this dispensation that uh, that the church is going to be restored or some nonsense like that. I also have a video uh, rebuking the thing of the latter rain movement. Charismatics. Wicked devils. Okay? Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. He who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Do you get it? Now, look at verse 32. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Nine, Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. Not Exodus, Brad. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, verse... 26. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And verse 33. Ah. But his wife looked behind, looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Now, the angels said, do not look back. What were they looking back? Why was she looking back? And what she was leaving behind? Look at, go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Okay? Matthew chapter 16. Verses 24 on to verse 28. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 on to verse 28. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now our instruction and in righteousness for today, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. You could say crosses dispensational lines. Yes. But let's continue. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble. You're going to hell. I don't care what uh, MacArthur tells you, Breaker tells you, Kim tells you. I No. You take the mark of the beast, you're doomed. 
And see, see people who are non-dispensational, easy believism heretics, it's just believe. They're doing that so that when the church of the living God, the body of Christ is caught up and you who are left behind go through the time of Jacob's trouble, just believe. You can take the mark because you are saved by grace through faith today. Just believe. You see? You see? That's why they're doing that. To prepare you who are going to be left behind to take the mark of the beast, which damns you to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Okay, you're not going to gouge it out of your forehead. You're not going to cut your hand off to save yourself. You take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell. Why? I believe there is, uh, in the mark of the beast, there is going to be a DNA altering agent, just like there is in the vaccine. The vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Okay? Why? Because the church of the living God, the body of Christ is still here on the earth. Okay? That comes after we, the church of the living God, are caught up. Okay? Let's continue this. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Being beheaded during the time of Jacob's trouble. For the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said, instruction and righteousness for us today in this dispensation. Yes, absolutely. This is before the crucifixion, was it not? Was it not? Still under the law, still addressing the Jews. For what is it for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Ah see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, you take that mark. You you gain the whole world, right? Right? You gain the whole world. You'll be able to buy or sell. Now that you have the mark. During the time of Jacob's trouble. You're going to go to hell. But yes. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world. And lose his own soul. You're lost and going to hell. If you take. The mark of the beast. You're going to hell. And during that time. Is it going to be worth it? According to what we've been looking at, brethren. Let's continue. For the Son of Man shall come in his glory, in the glory of his Father, with his angels. Oh, angels. Us coming down with him. The body of Christ. Should not. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Some have uh, taken verse 28 and said that means that there are immortals um, walking around on the earth right now. But no, 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 no. Son of Man came into his kingdom, Jerusalem, when he was upon the ass. And they were lying things down before him, saying, Hosanna uh, be the, to the Son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Okay? Very saying to you, there be some standing here, that generation, which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And. He came into his kingdom, Jerusalem, okay, the kingdom of heaven. The king came into his kingdom riding upon an ass, upon the foal of an ass, okay? He came into his kingdom, and they did the branches and whatnot. That's what he's talking about there, okay? Not that there are mortals on the earth right now. Oh, it's so romantic. No, no, no. you and I, we're all going to die. There's no escape from that war. Okay, that's nonsense. And that this already happened during the first century. 
You know, no, 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 no. That's what that means. Okay, that is what that means. Now go to Luke chapter nine. Luke chapter nine. Luke chapter nine. Luke chapter nine, verses fifty-seven on to verse sixty-two. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord. I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my at, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Remember Lot's wife. She looked back. Let me first go back. Let me, oh, look at all that I'm leaving. Getting brought onto something that she knew not what was going to become. Neither did Lot. And we know that Lot has a relation with his own daughters because the daughters said that there is no man to come into us after all the manner of the earth. They thought the whole world done God. Boom. Beg your pardon. And they got Lot snuckered, drunk, and they lie with their father. And what came of Lot, of that relation between him and his daughters? Moab and the Ammonites. The Moabites and the Ammonites. And you look in the scriptures, what kind of hassle did they cause unto Israel? Okay? Let's see. She looked back. And as we see in Luke chapter 17, verse 31, in that day he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Don't look at what you're leaving. Keep your eyes on the prize. Our Lord Jesus Christ. See? And during the time of Jacob's trouble, there are, there, there are those, brethren, that are going to look back at what they are leaving. Because what did, what did we read in Matthew chapter 16? In Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Uh, For what is it profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Take the mark of the beast, then you can buy and sell. And you can have your vineyards and uh, store up gold and silver for you for the last days. Well, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What? The mark of the beast? See, there are those during this time period, at the time of Jacob's trouble of the Jews, who are going to be looking back at what they're leaving behind. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You take that mark, you're done. It's not going to be worth it during the time of Jacob's trouble, dear friend. But I want to give you a contrast to this. Okay? There are those during the time of Jacob's trouble who are going to look back. Who are going to take that mark of the beast. Who will gain the whole world. You can buy and sell now. But their soul is gone. 
You're going to hell. Okay? Go to Exodus. Go to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Come on. Exodus chapter 3. We are going to be reading verses 1 under verse 6. Okay? Keep in mind, the angel said unto Lot and his wife and his two daughters, Don't look back. Lot's wife looked back. What am I leaving? What is it profited if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Looking for those creature comforts that some of the Jewish people will lose during the time of Jacob's trouble? Hey, here, take the mark. You'll be able to buy and sell. And see, today, with the rumors and the vaccines, they're making you ready to get it. The mark of the beast. This is all preparatory, people. That's why you and me are the church of the living God. We gotta fight this stuff, boy. Give them a testimony. Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. We're reading on to verse 6, by the way. The priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the mist of the bush. So fire in the mist of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not Burned. There are 7,000 that have not bowed their knee unto Baal. I have reserved 7,000 uh, men who have not bowed the knee unto Baal. Excuse me. Okay. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest this holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Verse 4, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, when the Lord sees that his people, when Jewry, when Israel, turn aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. Turn aside to see. See, Lot's wife looked back at what she was uh, leaving behind and yearned for that what she was believe, uh, leaving behind. But see, there are those who are going to turn aside to see. Wow, this Jesus, who the church of the living God told us about, warned us through the scriptures about he truly is our Messiah. They're going to turn aside to see. Go to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. I'm going to read this whole chapter. Can you handle that? Isaiah chapter 42. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. 
bringing the Gentiles into the tree of the Jew. Who is this referring to? Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Let's continue. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment on to truth. He shall not fall, he shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith, the, thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners that, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are, are come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar, that Kedar doth, Kedar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rocks sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord, and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar, his en and he shall prevail against his enemies. Um, he will destroy those enemies who would not uh, have him to rule over them. I have long holden my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will devour and de I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Narrow is the way that leadeth on to life and there be few that find it. And broad is the way that leadeth on to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. A way that they have not known. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed. That trust in graven images, that say to the molten images, ye are our gods. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? How does this, how doth this man uh, know such things, uh, no letters, never having learned? What they said of God the Father uh, himself? Yeah. <clears throat> Who is blind as he that is perfect? and blind as the Lord's servant, seeing many things, but thou observest not, opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? 
Who will hearken and hear from the time to come? For the time to come. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore, he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. Okay? Now, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 on to verse 13. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You can reference that onto the uh, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, who would uh, who didn't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's uh, image. Okay, also a parallel onto the time of Jacob's trouble coming for those who will stand during the time of Jacob's trouble of the Jews. Okay, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved, past tense, thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Then everyone that is called by my name, even everyone that is called by my name, excuse me, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes. Lost people and heretics calling us blind. Okay? Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can, can who among them can declare this and shew us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servants, whom I have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved. I have shewed when there was no strange God among you. Little G, that, by the way. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Okay? And now, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. You know, those who are Jewish, who actually truly get saved and born again, converted, and are of the church of the living God, um, praise the Lord for. But there are those uh, who are Jewish out there who, for some reason, fall for the teaching of the Roman Catholic heretical satanic trinity. That's sad. That's sad. Because in witnessing unto Jewish people as I have, 
that's been brought up. You believe in three gods. No, I believe in one God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, your Messiah. See, a Jew knows that there is only one God. The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And on to the Jew. What are they looking for? Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called capital W, Wonderful, capital C, Counselor, the mighty, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, as king, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. See. The Jew is waiting for the son of David, their king. But they stumble. They stumble. They know that their savior, the son of David, their king, is going to be God the Father. But they did not believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was, is, their promised Messiah, God their Father. See, they rejected it. They rejected him. Because they said, we have no king but Caesar. Okay? Go to John. John chapter 8. Again, there are going to be those during the time of Jacob's trouble that are going to have eyes to see, that are going to turn away, uh, turn aside to see. Okay? While there are going to be some that are going to look back and take that mark of the beast. But there are going to be those of the Jews who are going to turn aside to see what the Lord is doing. Okay? John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verses 24 and on to verse 27. John chapter 8, verse 24 on to verse 27. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. And right there, verse 24, if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Not one of three gods, the one in the middle. Three divine persons. What is a person? A spirit, soul, and body. So, three divine persons make one God? That's insane. Unless you believe that I am he. Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You shall die in your sins. Did the Jews at this time, this generation, believe that? There were some that did. Yes. But as a nation, no. And the ones who should have known were blind. Okay? Go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Okay? Unless you believe I am he. 
God the Father. Jesus referring to himself as the Father. Okay? John chapter 4, verses 21 under verse 26. Jesus never said that he was the Messiah. Uh, what, do you, what do you do with this, hot shot? John chapter 4, verses 21 under verse 26. Talking to the woman uh, uh, at the well. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Roman Catholic Church. For salvation is of the Jews. There's some of you out there that hate that, especially you Catholics. Oh, we don't hate the Jews. Oh, your system teaches replacement theology. Even though your little Francis and all their Je all his Jesuits, okay, even though they're not saying we are Jews, they say that the church has replaced the Jew. The Great tribulation is for the purification of the church, right? That's what Catholicism teaches. Hence, replacing the Jew, saying that they are Jews when they are not. Salvation is of the Jews, dear friends. Okay? But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. You don't have the authorized version of the scriptures. Check your perversion that you're using. Is there an A there? You take out that one little letter and say God is spirit. How are you to know which one is which? Oh. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee. It was John Hagee, I believe it was, with his little devil salute thing that he does when he's preaching. Uh, he said that Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah. I that speak on to the MP. Someone denies that when it's written right there. Yeah, hath God said? John chapter 8. Go back to John chapter 8. Verses 33 on the verse 39, uh, 59. John chapter 8. Verses 33 on the verse 59. Then answered him, we, they answered him, okay, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Excuse me. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, 
if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard from, of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. <laughs> oh yeah. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode, abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Paul echoes this about him who is... Um, uh, the, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord because they are spiritually discerned. They cannot know them because they are foolishness unto them. Okay? You need the Spirit of God to truly understand the Scriptures. There are things in the Scriptures that lost people can understand. Yes. But the deeper things of Scripture, this is a spiritual book. You need the Spirit. And the Lord is that Spirit to guide you into all truth. See? Okay. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Look at that. Look at what they said to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, standing right in front of them. They evaded when he was putting his finger right on it. They evaded and turned it back unto him. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Jesus answered, I have not the devil, but I honor my father, and ye do, and ye do dishonor me. I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who makest thou, makest thou thyself? Okay, now hold on. You read this whole chapter on your own time. Um, he was plainly saying, I am your Messiah. I am God the Father. I am here. Here is the kingdom of heaven. I'm offering it on to you. Okay? As we read in Isaiah 57. Okay? There were some that, there were some that did believe when he was offering on to them the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But think about that. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, shewed plainly who he was, who he is. God Almighty, the Father. Okay? And they didn't see it. They didn't see it. And he, in this very chapter, said of those people, said, He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye hear them not, because ye are not of God. And they have the audacity to say, Who makest thou thyself? Whoop. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. 
It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Right there, in accordance with Exodus chapter 3, I am that I am. I am. Right there, verse 58. Okay? All you Trinitarians and all you weird, whatever. He just right there took the title of God the Father. Not that he is as of God the Father. He is God the Father. Spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ. The body. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. Okay? Jesus just called himself the Father there. Look at their reaction. After he clearly explained to them, he told them the truth. Here I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out to the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. The Jews knew what he said. How come some of you don't? Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 19. John chapter 10, verses 19 on to verse 42. I covered part of this in the Ye Are Gods, uh, Ye Are Gods video, okay? But um, John chapter 10, verses 19 on to verse 42. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath the devil, and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath the devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. <laughs> and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. <laughs> Infallible proof after proof after proof after proof. Yet they didn't see. They didn't hear. Because they were of their father, the devil. They were blind. Jesus answered them. Oy vey. <laughs> I told you. And ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. Soul is greater than all, okay? My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. My hand, verse 28, verse 29, nine, my Father's hand. And right here, verse 30, I and my Father are one in essence. No. I and my Father are one in spirit. No. I and my Father are one. Again, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. 
and because that thou being a man makest thou makest thyself God. Which is what they were looking for. Isaiah chapter 9. Most of Father. The, the everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Son of David. God the Father. It's what they were looking for. And it was right there. Jesus answered them. Many good works have I stoned thee. Uh, excuse me. Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered, and Jesus answered them, It is written, Is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods, knowing good and evil? Like, like I said, I already did a video on this. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought him, therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John had first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no, no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. He said, If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. He said, I told you, but they didn't see. They didn't see. They were looking at their kingdom. We have no king but Caesar. Lot's wife, looking back. If these Sadducees and Pharisees turned aside to see that their Messiah was here, that they wouldn't follow and serve him, not that they would be exalted as the ruling class, see, but that God the Father would rule and reign upon the earth. Now, it was prophesied that it wasn't going to happen, so that he may be a light unto the Gentiles to bring us on to, into the tree of the Jew, to make them jealous, yes, okay? But see, it was all there right in front of them, but they didn't see because they were looking at what they were going to leave behind if they gave all unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, their Messiah. And it said when Moses had turned aside to see. You get it? Okay. Now, John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Verses 1. On to verse 11. John chapter 14, verses 1, on to verse 11. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, 
Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, that I am in the Father, and, that, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwelleth in me, the soul of the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Deuteronomy, chapter 18. Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15. And verse 22. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Salvation is of the Jews. Hello. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. What? The prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. When Moses turned aside to see, that's when the Lord said, Okay. During the time of Jacob's trouble, which is for the Jews, you're either going to take the mark or you're not. And what is it going to profit you if you gain the whole world by taking the mark of the beast and you lose your own soul? Are you going to be looking back at what you're leaving behind? Why, you know, oh, I, I have this lifestyle. I have, I have these things. I, I need to take the mark of the beast so I can sell, so I can buy. And we have evidence that during the time of Jacob's trouble, there are going to be those of the Jews who are going to live quite comfortably, even during that time. Even during that time, when the son of perdition is going forth conquering and to conquer. Read James, book of James, chapter 5, which we already looked at. You're going to look back and see what you're leaving behind and weep for it. Or during the time of Jacob's trouble, are you going to turn aside to see what great thing the Lord is doing? That the tree is being burned, but not consumed, because there will be a remnant that escapes into Jew. Okay? That is going to be it for this video. Um, like I said, this, this, this took a couple days to put all this together.
praise the Lord. And like I said, there are some of you out there who are aware of how I actually, you know, how the Lord works on me about doing videos and stuff. I'll get pieces of paper with stuff written all over and then come put it all together and look at it. It's like, <laughs> now what? Okay. Hopefully these videos have helped some of you. And also to, also to, um, this was also a rebuke onto the charismatics as well. And also a rebuke onto those who think that there are two catching aways. We encompassed many things in these videos today. But uh, that is going to be it. Um, kind of a little tired uh, at this moment, but i um, going to upload these. These are going to take a long time to upload, so... Thank you. Thank you to every single solitary one of you for your charity, for your mercy, for your grace upon us. May the Lord reward you. And um, that, like I said, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Love you. And we will see you in the next video.